I know what you're thinking. Cape Town in South Africa is one of the most beautiful cities in the world, but the crime statistics, they're pretty bad. Why would I want to travel to such a dangerous place? Well, what if I told you that it's not as dangerous for tourists as what the media portrays? Would you believe me? Well, let's get into it. We are Rhett and Claire. We quit our jobs in 2018 and left South Africa to pursue a life of full-time travel. We've taught English in Vietnam, worked online from Bali, and now run our YouTube channel full-time while traveling the world. We could live anywhere, but something about Cape Town draws us back each year. It's quite simply our favorite city in the world. We've been visiting Cape Town since we were youngsters and we've now lived here on and off for over a year. We want to share some of our personal experiences and safety tips with you. Before we start though, let's give you a bit of background info about Cape Town because it helps explain why the statistics are so high. Cape Town and South Africa has a dark history. I'm sure by now you all know about apartheid, but if you've never heard about it, basically this was a period in which people of color or communities deemed non-white were treated terribly and many were ripped out of their homes and relocated to new designated black only areas outside of Cape Town known as the Cape Flats. It has now been 100 years since the establishment of the Group Areas Act and the ramifications of this act are still very plain to see despite South Africa now being a democracy and run by a party of color. People living in these areas remain poverty stricken and face serious social problems including a high unemployment rate and high levels of gang activity and general crime. Inequality is very real and very obvious in Cape Town. You'll see the homelessness all over the city center next to the biggest mansions and sports cars. When you're here, we highly suggest you do a township tour if you're interested in learning more about the history and life in the Cape Flats. Back to the statistics. If we look at this map, we can clearly see the areas affected by high murder rates. The Cape Flats stick out and is known to be one of the most violent and dangerous places in South Africa. It has been compared to the favelas in Brazil or the Bronx in New York City. Here, gangs of young men rule the night, defending turf for drug lords. It is in these areas where 90% of crimes committed in Cape Town occur. Barring a township tour, if you even do decide to do one, you as a tourist will not end up in these areas. You'll most likely be based in the city centre and the surrounding suburbs. You'll be located in these green zones on this map. Where all the hikes are, where Table Mountain is, where the vineyards are, the restaurants, hotels, everything. The centre of Cape Town truly feels like a first world city. It's extremely clean and well run. And I'll put some footage on the screen for you right now, but there's a wonderful working public transport system. And as you can see, lots of foreigners exploring the city by foot. We'll go into detail in a future where to stay video, but we'll quickly mention a few of our favorite areas. Clifton, Seapoint, Greenpoint, Devartakant, Camps Bay, Bantry Bay, Gardens, Tamburskluf, and even the CBD where we are based right now are great areas to stay in. Of course, some people do creep into the city center, especially at night, out of desperation and to commit opportunistic crimes like car break-ins and muggings. The exact same way they do in New York City, London, Paris, Sydney, all the big cities of the world. There's lots of police presence, security guards on every corner, and as a result, we feel pretty safe here. Just a quick apology for the wind today. Literally, it's been perfect weather the whole month, and now today just decided to be so, so windy. Sorry. I know Cape Town is notorious for wind, but this really doesn't happen often. apartment which you guys will actually see in the next video we are in love with it anyway I know throughout this video we've been talking very general factual talking about statistics and everything but I think it's time that we talk about our personal experiences with safety here in Cape Town from all of our time spent in Cape Town over the years we've only really got two incidences worth mentioning 
The first one is catcalling. I have been catcalled a number of times while with my female friends and by myself, by male workers on the roads, generally in Camps Bay, Clifton and Seapoint. Uh, it's super uncomfortable in the moment and I get annoyed and I want to say something back to these guys, but I highly suggest that you don't. Uh, I just ignore them and then they end up leaving me alone. Unfortunately, that's something that does happen here to female travelers. We walked past a couple of construction workers on our walk around the city today and I think because I'm with Claire, it didn't happen at all. So I think it's more if you are a female traveler by yourself. Then the second incident that we are going to mention is the one evening when the sun was going down, we were walking in Seapoint and I was in front, Rhett was behind me and all of a sudden this young boy who kind of looked like he was on drugs to be honest, he just jumped at me and like scared me and I jumped and grabbed my stuff I'm like what are you doing dude and he started laughing so hard and then he looked at Rhett and he saw him and said ha 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 sorry sir that was it it was weird it was a creepy incident and I think if Rhett wasn't there with me I probably would have been mugged that evening. But besides those two incidences, there's really nothing else we can talk about. Everybody basically just minds their own business and carries on with their life. There's no staring or asking for pictures or harassment or anything. Well, we personally have not experienced that at all. The only thing that might happen to you is some of the homeless people coming up to you asking for a bit of change or some food. But overall, I found the homeless people that are in and around the city to be very harmless. They really just want your help and they don't seem to be malicious at all. Alright, with those experiences covered, we thought we'd go over a few important things to know and some safety tips. First and foremost, our number one safety tip is to just avoid walking on the streets at night time. As we said before, that is when the crimes can happen. Secondly, you'll be able to find these guys wearing green vests that say CCID. They are basically the security guards of the city. If you are ever feeling unsafe or you need to know something, feel free to approach them for help. Next tip, remember to keep your phone and wallet out of sight and if you ever need to use your phone on the street, have a good grip on it just in case anything happens. But this really does apply to everywhere in the world, even in Bali. Next, don't be afraid to ask anybody nearby you for help if you find yourself lost or you just need some basic tips. South Africans are super friendly and are always willing to lend a hand. Next tip is to minimize the amount of cash that you draw from the ATMs and carry on you. You will really need more than 500 to 1000 Rand in cash. Most places have card facilities so make use of that rather. And then lastly, just have your wits about you and be vigilant and you'll be perfectly fine. As you can see, the streets are bustling with people, locals and tourists alike. The city feels very alive and safe and we highly recommend you get out there and explore what it has to offer. There are tons of cool historical buildings, bits of history scattered all around and amazing restaurants and cafes on virtually every corner. If walking on the streets and exploring is not for you, then that's absolutely fine too. You can literally travel to Cape Town and book your accommodation and Uber straight from your accommodation to the beaches and the mountains and the vineyards and literally never have to walk on the streets. And if you do it this way, well then you are definitely not going to run into any trouble and nothing's going to happen to you at all. It's when you are on the streets, especially in the evenings, where something might potentially happen to you. But other than that, you'll be absolutely fine. And then a question that a lot of people ask us is, would we suggest solo travelers female travelers specifically to travel to Cape Town? And the answer is yes. In fact, a lot of my friends here in Cape Town are solo female travelers. They absolutely love Cape Town and they feel totally safe here. And that's because they're very vigilant and they don't go out at night. So thankfully, nothing has happened to them. Touch wood. My f solo female friends did feel so apprehensive about coming to Cape Town because of the statistics and the media portraying it in a certain way. But once they got here, they realized that it is perfectly safe. And yeah, they're happy here now and they live here permanently. <laughs> and then similarly, there's a lot of people asking if it's safe for families to travel here. And 
once again absolutely yes it is there is so much for a family to do here there's kiddie play areas and awesome beaches to go to and all sorts of things for kids to do here and as a family you're pretty much not going to go out in the evenings anyway and don't get us wrong we're not telling you to not go out of your household at all during the evening that's not the case just don't walk on the streets get an uber from your place straight to your restaurant or wherever you're going in the evenings and then if you're still apprehensive about traveling to Cape Town but you, you do want to come here then sign up for our retreats you can go to our website retinclair.com and click on retreats and yeah sign up for our next retreat and travel with us then you won't have to worry about a thing another thing we want to quickly touch on is safety on the beaches and on the hikes with the beaches being so beautiful there's always people enjoying them pretty much every day of the week if you take your belongings to the beach and you're by yourself and you feel like a swim, just simply ask the person next to you if they wouldn't mind looking after your stuff while you go swim. Most people are perfectly fine with doing that for you. We do it all the time, here and in Bali. There was a guy in Clifton Beach that asked myself and my friends to look after the keys of his Lamborghini the once. So, yeah. It's quite a common thing to do here. <laughs> South Africans, we're very, very trustworthy people. <laughs> As with pretty much anywhere in the world, just be mindful of your stuff and don't leave it unattended. We have heard stories of our friends' bags being stolen with their cell phones in it, so just be mindful of that and rather ask somebody to look after them if you do need to leave it on the beach. Don't worry, that isn't really a regular occurrence and there are also security guards walking on the beach, especially on the weekends. And then with the hikes, we recommend sticking to the very popular routes like Lion's Head, Pipe Track, Constantinic, and Table Mountain. Like the beaches, there are always tons of people on the trails walking, running, and playing with their dogs. If you decide to do any of those routes, you'll be absolutely fine. And always remember to have a hiking buddy. You should never be hiking on your own in case of an emergency as well. So one or two or three or four many hiking buddies is good. <laughs> Honestly, if you can just get past the statistics on the internet and take the leap, you might just discover an incredible city that you can't help fall head over heels in love with. We truly believe that Cape Town is one of the best cities in the world and we cannot wait for you to discover it. If you have any further questions, put them down in the comments below and we'll get back to you. If you need help planning your trip to Cape Town, then check out our resource pack below or check out our Cape Town guide video here and our 15 top things to do in Cape Town here. We'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.